Hello everyone. Welcome. I hope you're all well. Uh, my name is Riley and I'll be hosting this technical webinar for you all today. Um, before we get started, I'd just like to, um, to go over the notifications and sounds. So uh, this is quite a large session today. Um, if you would like to go to your notification settings, which you can uh, you can go via your the cog signal, uh, the cog symbol um, in your bottom right hand corner of your screen. Um, sorry, this includes you, Shaquille, as well. Um, if everyone can just go to uh, their notification settings and untick all those boxes um, underneath there, you will not, um, you won't receive any pop-ups or sounds, um, which can be uh, which can be disturbing um, during the session. Okay, so um, today's topic is hydrogen production, storage, and application for a sustainable future. Um, now, this webinar is being presented by um, Dr. Shaquille Ahmed, um, who is a course Hello. developer, unit coordinator, and our, one of our instructors of our short course um, in hydrogen that we'll, we'll touch on briefly um, a bit later. Um, and just some frequently asked questions. So uh, just to be clear, that, so everyone registered for this webinar, um, including those who are in the session at the moment, will receive a copy of the PDF slides, the slides that we're presenting today, and a link to the video recording, uh, which we also upload to our YouTube channel um, within, yeah, within one business day. I'll, se I'll send the email tomorrow, um, so likely within one business day. Um, and just check your junk email or folder as well in case it goes in there. We also provide a free digital certificate of attendance, but you must fill out um, a form at the end of this session if you would like to receive one. Um, so it, there's a QR code and a link at the that we'll provide, um, and that takes you to a short form which you need to fill out um, if you would like to receive one of those. And then we will also send you um, that within one or two business days via email. Okay, so just uh, briefly about EIT, if you're not already familiar with us. Um, so we are an engineering specialist education provider. Um, we're one of the only institutes in the world that specializes in engineering. Um, we offer short courses that we call professional certificates. Uh, we have diplomas and advanced diplomas in the vocational sector. We also have undergraduate and graduate certificates, bachelor's and master's degrees, and a doctor of engineering in higher education. We have industry-oriented programs, so all of our courses are regularly updated to stay relevant with rap rapidly changing technology and industry developments. Um, our vocational programs and higher education degrees are registered and accredited by the Australian government. Um, however, we do have courses um, such as advanced diplomas, bachelors, masters, um, that also are recognised internationally under one of the three engineer, uh, international engineering accords, so the, um, the Sydney, the Dublin and the Washington Accord. We have industry experience lecturers, so um, we employ lecturers from all around the world to deliver our teaching um, and and they have uh, industry experience. Um, we, we don't only uh, employ lecturers with academia, we have uh, lecturers from all around the world with real industry experience that they can apply to their teaching. Um, and we also have a unique delivery model. So that includes uh, the use of these um, webinars, uh, uh, these live and interactive webinars. Um, the one, the webinar you're in today is, yeah, we've we've got nearly 300 people in in this session so far. Um, so, as if you're a student at EIT, we have much smaller cl uh, class sizes, um, so they're more interactive. Um, we promote, um, we we like our students to interact with their lecturer and their peers. Um, we have dedicated learning support for our students from when they start one of our courses to when they graduate. 
and also state-of-the-art technologies such as our hands-on workshops, uh, remote laboratories and simulation software. Okay, now I'll hand over to our um, presenter for this technical webinar today, um, Dr. Shaquille Ahmed. Um, I'll yeah, now hand over to you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Riley. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Sh Dr. Shaquille. Uh, currently, I'm working as a course developer, unit coordinator at the New England Institute of Technology, uh, as well as I'm working as a senior research fellow at Carter University. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research uh, through the EIT as well as Carter University. Um, so please um, take your time to go through my biodata. I don't want to spend time here. Rather, I would like to focus more on the topics that is our hydrogen production, storage, and application for a sustainable future. So let's go directly into the topics. Okay, uh, these are the summary, what we are going to cover today. Mm, Riley has already done the introduction part. Uh, so first of all, we'd like to know what is hydrogen. And then our next question will be, why hydrogen? And in answering those questions, then we will go through the production technologies, storage technologies, and the application of the hydrogen energy. And finally, we will have some time for the question and answer. Okay, so what is the hydrogen actually? If we know that the hydrogen is the first element of the periodic table, so which means it is the lightest element, which also means that it has got very low viscosity, very low density. It has the atomic structure. It is actually biatomic molecules. So here we are seeing that two atoms of hydrogen is creating a molecules. It is colorless, tasteless, odorless, non-toxic gas. That is the important thing. And that's why we are so much interested in, in this hydrogen now. And finally, at the same time, it is highly combustible. Okay, let's go and have a look at some chemical and thermal properties of hydrogen. If you look at the thermal conductivity, it is 0 0.1805 watt per meter degree Kelvin. The important thing that we should focus on or notice is the boiling point and melting point. The boiling point is 20.4 degree Kelvin, which means if you are thinking about the centigrade scale, minus to 50 degrees centigrade, which is really low, really low. And that's the reason normally we get the hydrogen in the nature at atmospheric pressure and temperature, the gaseous form. Now, the, definitely the melting point is further lower, which is minus 258 degrees centigrade. If we look at the Latin heat of vaporization and Latin heat of fusion, we can see that it has got significant value, which is 447 kilojoule per kg and 58 kilojoule per kg. This is definitely flammable gas. And the most important thing about it is thermal properties is the heat of combustion. If we look at the value here, which is 144 megajoule per kg, so that means if you would like to compare this one with the natural gas or the gasoline, they all are in the range of 42 to 55 megajoule per kg. So in that point of view, hydrogen heat of combustion is really high. So that means kilojoule per kg, it is really high. But then what is the problem? The problem is the volumetric density. So that means that even if it is a very high gravimetric density, the volumetric density is really low. 
and that is the problem for storing the hydrogen. We'll talk about that thing a little bit in today's webinar also. Now, the next question is, why hydrogen? Why we are focusing on hydrogen so much nowadays? Okay, the first thing is, we all are moving towards the net zero emission and we are actually moving to the zero carbon dioxide emission technology. And this is a non-toxic gas. I already told you about that. So this is one of the focus. But apart from that, what are the other reasons then we should focus on the hydrogen? Hydrogen is a versatile energy carrier and feed store. So if we look at the figure here on our right, we can see hydrogen can be used as a fuel from the energy carrier point of view, or hydrogen can be used as an industrial feed store. If we look down here further, we can see that hydrogen can be used for the production of ammonia in chemical industries, in the petrochemical industries, in the glass manufacturing industry, in metal processing. This is a huge impact. We are actually trying, there are lots of research is going on. We are actually trying to use hydrogen for the production of steel. We will discuss about this a little bit in the application stage. In the production of synthetic fuel and even in the food industry. On the other hand, if we look at from the energy carrier point of view or from the fuel point of view, we can see that we are using hydrogen in the transport for the production of electricity and for the generation of heat. The export is actually common between both energy carrier and feedstock. So that is the reason we are nowadays focusing on hydrogen a lot. So to develop this value chain, what we should do then, we will have to focus in three areas. The first one is the production technologies. How we can develop a very good production technology for the hydrogen. As soon as we produce the hydrogen, the next question is where we should store or how it will be transported. So we definitely have to develop technology in the storage and transport area. And finally, the utilization. So we have been using hydrogen as an industrial feed stock in a lot of chemical industries. So definitely we increase our technology so that we can focus on more on utilization of hydrogen. If we look at this figure here, that is actually explain the whole story. So from the production, we will learn about this thing a little bit more here. We can get in two ways. The first one is actually thermochemical part that includes the fossil fuel. And the second one is the electrochemical part that includes the electrolysis. From the storage and transport technology point of view, we will have to develop a very good technology for the storage of hydrogen that includes the compressed hydrogen gas, liquid hydrogen, and the hydrogen with the molten metal and metal hydrate. Definitely for the transport, the pipeline is a big issue and many research is going on here, as well as there are other means of transportation like truck, ship and rail. From the utilization point of view, as a fuel, heat, transport and stationary electricity. And as the industrial feed stock, there are many. We will touch a couple of them. So before I go to the production technology of the hydrogen, I would like to talk about a little bit about the color of hydrogen. Now we have been talking about a lot about the color of the hydrogen, gray hydrogen, blue hydrogen, green hydrogen. But what does they really mean actually? Let's have a look quick. So now this figure actually explains the whole story. 
on my left hand side, we are actually looking the gray hydrogen. In the middle, blue hydrogen. And on the right, it's a green hydrogen. Now, what is the difference between these three types of hydrogen? We know that this is a very established technology nowadays in industries that we are producing hydrogen from the fossil fuel. We will go into that a little bit more into deep when we will learn about the production technology. But when we are talking about using the fossil fuel, why we need to use the fossil fuel? Or in other cases like natural gas or coal, we need that to produce electricity. And that electricity we are using for the production of hydrogen. Now that could be electrolysis, that could be steam methane reforming, whatever it is. If we are getting the electricity from a fossil fuel, that is the source of greenhouse gas emission. And after producing the hydrogen, we are not treating the carbon dioxide, we are emitting the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, or we are releasing that into the atmosphere without any treatment. We then call it gray hydrogen. In case of blue hydrogen, we are actually doing the same thing. There is no difference between the production point of view. We are using the fossil fuel and everything is the same. Only is the difference we are treating the carbon dioxide. How? We could store that underground in a depleted reservoir, or we could use that for the production of syngas and synthetic fuel. So in that case, we are calling it carbon capture, if we are storage, if we are storing, or utilization. So we call it CCUS. Now, when we are doing this and we are treating carbon dioxide in this way, then we call it blue hydrogen because by doing this, we are reducing the greenhouse gas emission into the atmosphere. And the third one is green hydrogen. And that is actually purely net zero emission of carbon dioxide. How? We need the electricity. And that electricity we are producing from the renewable energy. Right? And that renewable energy we are using to create the electricity. And that electricity we are using for the electrolysis, which is we are splitting the water into hydrogen and oxygen. So our product is hydrogen and byproduct is oxygen. We will learn about that process a little bit in this webinar. In this case, there is no emission at all. And that is the reason we call it green hydrogen. So the gray, gray hydrogen is the existing technology. We are working a lot to produce the blue hydrogen by treating the carbon dioxide properly. And green hydrogen is still under research stage because to produce per kg of green hydrogen, the cost is still very high, which is around six to seven dollar per kg. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Australian dollar. So this is where actually we need to do a lot of work so that we can reduce the price of hydrogen. Now, we would like to focus on more, a little bit on hydrogen production technologies. So as I mentioned before, there is two types of production process for hydrogen. The one that is coming from electrochemical, that involves the use of an electric current. We already have talked about that. And that actually dissociates water into hydrogen and oxygen. Now this pathway required the use of low or zero emission electricity. When we are talking about low, that means blue hydrogen. When we are talking about zero, that means green hydrogen to produce clean hydrogen. And the second one, that is our existing technology where we are producing hydrogen using the fossil fuel as a feedstock. Now this process must be paired with the carbon capture, utilization and storage to produce the clean hydrogen unless it is a biomass feedstock is used that is the different over there we are not producing any carbon dioxide so
So in the production technology and in the electrochemical production process, there are mainly four. The first one is alkaline electrolysis. Now this classification is based on the electrolyte use in the electrochemical production process. The second one is proton exchange membrane electrolysis. The third one is solid oxide electrolysis. And the fourth one is anion exchange membrane electrolysis. The third and fourth one is not in the commercial stage yet. The solid state electrolysis is in the demonstration stage. And the last one is very much in the research in academia. So that is the reason I will focus in today's webinar, the first two. Now in the alkaline electrolysis, as I mentioned that this name actually came from the electrolyte used for the electrolysis process. So we are using the potassium hydroxide, 20 to 40% weight percentage solution. It's a liquid form. This is the schematic diagram of the alkaline electrolysis process. There's two electrode known as cathode and anode. And they are actually separated by a diaphragm. Hydroxyl ion pass through the diaphragm, forming hydrogen at the cathode. So the hydrogen is coming up from this side. And oxygen and water is coming out from the anode. Now in the cathode, we normally use nickel or nickel molybdenum. And for the anode, we use nickel or nickel cobalt. The next one is proton exchange membrane electrolysis. This is the famous electrolysis process. And there are lots of example and application of this one. We will go through that one when we will go through the application. So this is the schematic, schematic diagram of these proton exchange membrane electrolysis. Again, from the name, we can see that there is a membrane in the middle, which is actually very thin membrane. The right hand side is the anode, the left hand side is the cathode. So the water is coming into the anode and it actually break into oxygen, proton and electron. Oxygen actually coming out through the anode side. Now the proton passes through the membrane and go to the cathode side. On the other hand, the electrode actually flow through the external circuit and go to the cathode side. And then over there, the proton and electron are combined together at the cathode to produce the hydrogen. And that hydrogen is coming out from the cathode. Now, as I mentioned that this is a very famous technology of the electrolysis. But there is a limitation of this. And what? Because of the corrosive acidic condition of the membrane, the noble metals are used for the electrodes. So we can see we are using the cathode, which is platinum or platinum palladium, and for the anode, ruthenium oxide or iridium oxide. And definitely that increases the cost of the PM electrolysis. So the loss of research is now going on. Is there any replacement of the platinum? So this is where we need to focus more when we do the research. One replacement actually came out, which is the molybdenum disulfide and phosphide. That actually reduced the cost, but we need to work more on the stability of that material. After the electrochemical process, now we are focusing a little bit more on thermochemical production process. Now, the, this one is steam methane reforming 
it's a very famous process and most of the industry in chemical industry mining industry where we need or even food industry where we need to produce the hydrogen they are actually using this one so as i mentioned 95 percent of the hydrogen for refinery use nowadays produce hydrogen via steam method reforming Depending on the quality of the feedstock, say it could be natural gas, rich gases, naphtha. This is very important statistics. One ton of hydrogen produced will also produce from 9 to 12 tons of carbon dioxide. So this is the big concern for now it is for us. And that is why we are focusing. Is there any way we can reduce the use of fossil fuel? And do some other means for producing hydrogen. So whatever it is, this is steam reforming process must to be must have to be paired with the carbon capture and storage to produce the clean hydrogen. Even if we will not get the green hydrogen, but at least we can get the blue hydrogen. Now, what are the process? This steam reforming process actually consists of four individual processes the first one is the clean the feed stock so that means especially in the sulfur in the methane we need to clean that before the feed stock go into the reaction with steam the second step is the steam methane reforming reaction which convert the feed stock which is methane into hydrogen and carbon monoxide and that temperature happened at a very high temperature that is around 100 1000 degrees centigrade and moderate high pressure which is 7 to 10 bar so this is the second step and this is known as thin gas which is the combination of hydrogen and carbon monoxide our next stage is water ship reaction we know it is known as water ship reaction and what is that that is actually the carbon monoxide react more with the steam and produce carbon dioxide and more hydrogen and the finally the last step that is we still have got hydrogen and carbon dioxide all together so definitely we need to separate the carbon dioxide from hydrogen and that we do by using pressure swing absorption process this is a very famous process and when we do the pressure swing absorption process the hydrogen is clean and carbon dioxide is separated and definitely we need to treat the carbon dioxide in the appropriate manner so that means we could store that in the underground that is again a big area of research if we store that in the underground is that safe how long we can do that so i'm not going into that topic today but when we are getting the hydrogen we can use that for production of electricity or any other application now this is the simplified block diagram for the production of hydrogen through the steam methane reforming process if we look at here we can see that this is the first step where methane is reacting with hydrogen sorry water and producing carbon monoxide and hydrogen and this is a endothermic process which means we need to input heat into the system and that is what we are doing here in the by using the fuel gas and when we are using the fuel to hit that process definitely we are producing some carbon dioxide now the second step is we mentioned water gas ship reaction which is the syn gas which is carbon monoxide and hydrogen and from there carbon monoxide react with hydrogen uh, water again to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen and finally the pressure swing absorption purification process so we are actually creating 
carbon dioxide into three stage. The first stage is here when we are using the fuel into the steep reforming process. The second one is after the water shift reaction, when we are getting the hydrogen and carbon dioxide, uh, is it possible we can get rid of a little bit of carbon dioxide before it is going to pressure swing absorption? And finally, when the hydrogen is separated, then the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and some unburned methane, they are actually coming back into the steam reforming process again. So if we can treat it the whole thing properly, we can get the carbon dioxide removal efficiency from 90% up to 99%. So this is one of the way we can think about utilizing carbon dioxide to produce the blue hydrogen. Next, I'm going to discuss a little bit of storage technology for the hydrogen. Again, because of the time limitation, I will not cover all of these. However, I will try to give you some important information that will be really helpful. And definitely, as I mentioned, we do have our short course. You can enroll and we will teach there in details. So what are the form of storage of hydrogen? There is actually four form. The first one is gaseous hydrogen, definitely in the compressed form. The second one is liquid hydrogen. The third one is hydrogen with the molten metal. And the fourth one is as a metal hydrate. But why we are doing this thing? Why we cannot store hydrogen? At atmospheric pressure and ambient temperature. We will have to go back and we will have to remember that because of chemical and thermal property. Hydrogen is the lightest molecule. It has got very low density. For example, one kilogram of hydrogen can occupy 11 meter cube of hydrogen in room temperature and pressure. So that means in terms of volume, if we just would like to store one kg of hydrogen, we need a huge volume. And again, if we remember that, hydrogen has the very highest energy per mass, which is 144 megajoule per kg. But in terms of volumetric efficiency, it is really low because of the low density. And that is the reason we need to compress hydrogen to store it. And definitely when the question is compression or any type of energy input, then that will increase the cost of storage. So here actually we are going to cover in brief hydrogen store as a physical hydrogen as gas so without mixing with any molten metal or metal hydrate and physical storage as liquid the first one is physical storage of gas we already have learned that for the gas storage we need to compress the hydrogen and this is really a very high pressure. So the storage vessels that is actually the hydrogen will be there has to be very high pressure storage vessel so that it can sustain a very high pressure. Now, depending on the application for the gaseous storage of hydrogen, we do have four types of vessel. The first one is type one, which is actually made of metal normally steel and definitely this is the heaviest the second one is also made of aluminium and it has a metal liner hook wrapped right and that is normally with carbon fiber again this is heavy 
So these two types, type one and type two, they are normally used for stationary use. They are not suitable for the vehicle application. And they can sustain up to 300 bar pressure. Type three and type four, they are really good example for using the in the vehicle. The type three is actually again the tank is made of aluminium but it has got a carbon fiber wrapping and in this case it is double lapping the double wrapping the one is axial and the other is hoop and that definitely increase the pressure so in this case we can go up to 700 bar and finally the type number four is made of composite material which is carbon fiber and wrap with a polymer liner this is definitely the lightest and three and four types normally we are using in the vehicle especially if you're talking about the vehicle that is coming from the bmw that they are actually using type four apart from that there is a limitation of type one and two and what is that a very bad properties of hydrogen is when it flow through the steel or any metal it has got a diffusion power so that means it diffuse into the material and when it diffuse into the material the structural property of the material change say for example for the carbon steel if the hydrogen diffuse into the carbon carbon steel it will reduce the toughness of the and that still then become brittle and if it is brittle it will crack and this phenomena is known as hydrogen embrittlement so type one and type two are not good and there is a chance that hydrogen could leak and diffuse into the carbon steel on the other hand type three and four is resistance to permeation So this is one of the example of type four hydrogen storage vessel. We can see here, there is a high density polymer liner and carbon fiber composite. And this can actually sustain for sure 100, 700 bar. The next is the liquid hydrogen. And what is the liquid hydrogen? We are struggling with compressing the hydrogen. And even if it is a gas form, the density in terms of weight is not very good. So the best technique for storing maximum hydrogen in a restricted volume is to convert hydrogen gas to liquid. Now, when we are talking about converting hydrogen gas into liquid, and if we go to the property, we remember that the boiling temperature was 200 minus 253 degree centigrade. So we have to cool hydrogen up to that temperature to make it liquid. If we can make that liquid, then definitely the energy density of hydrogen can be improved for storing hydrogen in a liquid state. And to do that, we have to do a process which is known as liquefaction process and that involves the cooling of hydrogen to its cryogenic temperature and what is that as i mentioned before the liquefaction is done by cooling gas gaseous hydrogen below minus 250 degree centigrade and then we can store that in a large insulated tank the insulated tank is a very important concept because it is very hard to maintain minus 250 degrees centigrade in a tank it doesn't matter how insulated it is there will be always heat transfer and evaporation of hydrogen gas but one thing is another thing is important that this liquefaction process is actually consume 30 percent of the energy of the hydrogen 
and rats actually make it really expensive. So this is the one problem. And the second problem is the evaporation of hydrogen. This phenomena is known as boil off. So the boil off of liquefied hydrogen, especially when it is in a small tank with a large surface to volume ratio, that is another important concept. If the surface to volume ratio is really large, then boil off phenomena happen. So what should we do then? I mean, like if there is any boil off phenomena. But before that, let's look at some practical application and example. The super insulated pressure vessel at minus 250 degree, 253 degree centigrade are needed to store liquid hydrogen. We learned that. But the advantage is here, the pressure is not that high. So we don't need to go that high pressure. So within a five bar, we can manage that. And even at 252.87 degrees centigrade minus an atmospheric pressure, liquid hydrogen has a density of 71 kg per meter. So this is one of the advantage. If we can make that hydrogen liquid, we can store that with relatively low pressure. And at that pressure, 5 kg of hydrogen can be stored in a 75 liter of tank. As I mentioned before that boil off is a problem. And how do we take care of that thing? Because of the boiling off, the gas, hydrogen gas will accumulate it on the top of the tank and increase the pressure inside the tank. So that means gaseous hydrogen must be vented from the liquid tank and either release or recompress it again by a boil off compressor to be stored as a gaseous hydrogen. It is also possible to combine the liquid hydrogen with the metal hydrate, but that is the scope of our webinar today. So in that case, we actually normally use iron titanium to minimize the hydrogen losses due to boil off. Now let's go for the application of the hydrogen energy. As I mentioned before, Hydrogen can be used as a fuel, so that means as an energy carrier as well as as an industrial feedstock. So the first two example here, that is the power generation and storage and fuel cell electric vehicle. These are actually example of hydrogen as an energy carrier or fuel. The chemical industry, we will learn a lot about this today. I will give you the example, but I will not go into details because of time limitation. And then the liquefaction and export. Here, hydrogen can be used both as fuel or industrial feedstock. This is the diagram where we can see that we are producing hydrogen. Either it's coming from the blue hydrogen or green hydrogen, and then transportation and storage and utilization. Now let's go a quick application. The first one is the power generation and storage. And here we are actually using the fuel cell. What is the fuel cell? The fuel cell is a, actually an electrochemical cell that combines hydrogen and oxygen to generate an electric current and the byproduct is water. So that means this is exactly the reverse of electrolysis process. And we use the electric current or electricity from the fuel cell. So this is an example where how we can use the whole fuel cell concept. The electrolyzer or electrolysis process that is actually coming totally from the variable renewable energy source. We are storing the hydrogen. And then when time is needed, we can use the fuel cell to produce electricity. We cannot produce this because the cost of production is high. So we can only use that when the demand is peak. Okay, this is very famous hydrogen fuel transport, right? The concept is same. It has the electric rifle 
and then powered by a proton exchange membrane fuel cell stack and hydrogen storage tank. And definitely that has to be prioritized by 700 power. So there is a comparison here between the hydrogen fuel transport or hydrogen fuel car and the electric car. We have got some advantage for the hydrogen fuel car because it can travel longer distance, which is 400 to 600 kilometer without refueling. And the refueling time is really short. So less than five minutes, very much same as the gasoline. So for example, a six kg tank now can be used to travel between 500 to 800 kilometer. It is better if actually we are using hydrogen fuel car in the truck and buses. Because the bus can accept 30 to 40 kg of hydrogen when refueling as compared to the passenger car. And not only that, for the passenger car, we need 700 bar, but for the bus or truck, this could be done with only 350 bar. Okay, now let's talk about some application of hydrogen in the industrial feedstock, right? The first one is petrochemical. In the petrochemical industry, there is two very common terms. The one is hydro treating and the one is hydro cracking. So in the hydro treating, hydrogen is actually used to remove sulfur, nitrogen, and other contaminant from the petrochemicals to create a cleaner fuel. What about to hydro cracking? In the hydro cracking process, we actually pack the long chain heavy hydrocarbon like crude oil into unsaturated light hydrocarbon. And this hydrocarbon then saturated by adding hydrogen gas to create more valuable product like jet fuel, diesel, kerosene. Hydrogen is also used in the treatment for biofuel, but this is not a developed industry. This is developing. Okay. In the production of synthetic fuel, we already have learned how to produce syngas. And synthetic fuel can be derived from syngas. So the one option is to produce that using the steam methane reforming. And the other option is to produce that using two power to liquid. And what is that? That is simple, the reverse water gas shift reaction. So that means hydrogen and carbon dioxide is reacting in the other way not the water shift reaction to produce the same gas. And this is one of the very important example that could be, because in this way, we can treat the carbon dioxide and we can produce the same gas and synthetic oil. So that means we are reducing the emission in the atmosphere. Hydrogen is using in the chemical industry. And one of the famous example is renewable ammonia. Why? Because this ammonia has to be derived from clean hydrogen, right? And that could be used in the fertilizer and chemical, in the chemical market. Ammonia has got another application. It's a very good carrier of hydrogen or as an input of high temperature fuel cell that we already learned how to produce electricity. The production of methanol and its derivative relies on the conversation of seen gas and renewable methanol can be synthesized through the hydrogenation of carbon dioxide. In the production of olefin, hydrogen could be used. How? Right now we are using standard steam cracking process. So the production of olefin could happen through the hydrogenation of carbon dioxide in the presence of specific catalyst. In the food industry, hydrogen is used to harden oil to produce margarine and other semi-solid fats, like the shortening, which is used in baking. In the glass, man glass manufacturing, this has got a huge prospect here in Australia. And hydrogen plays an important role in the glass manufacturing process. How? It actually combined with nitrogen and create a neutral atmosphere 
that actually prevent the oxygen oxidation of and then help minimize frost the glass Okay, we are just waiting for the next slides to come up. Uh, but yes, it is here. Thank you very much. And finally, this could be the benchmark for the using of hydrogen in the steel production process. Nowadays, the steel actually produces almost 30 to 40 percent of greenhouse gas emission. Now, is there any way we can use hydrogen? to produce steel and that will reduce the emission significantly how in the steel manufacturing process right now iron ore is reduced to iron metal by using coal or coke in the blast furnace and definitely that produces a lot of greenhouse gas emission an alternate method could be the dri which is known as direct reduce iron so what happened here? The hydrogen is react with iron ore and it will produce metal iron and pure water. And that is totally harmless for the environment. Lots of research is going on in this area. And this could be a big, big change and a benchmark for the all industry if we can use hydrogen in the steel manufacturing process. Okay, uh, that was my presentation today. Uh, I would like to now hand over to Riley again. Riley, could you please take over? Thanks, Dr. Shaquille. Um, thank you for that uh, insightful presentation. Uh, and I think everyone um, yeah, really appreciated that. Um, and I think I would just like to finish off uh, your presentation with, um, with our course that we that we offer, um, and that you've obviously developed, Shaquille. Um, so it's our professional certificate of competency in hydrogen energy. Uh, so that's production, delivery, storage, and use. Um, and that is done three months. Uh, it's a live online course. Um, do you, do you have any comments you'd like to add about the course, Shaquille? Anyone that may um, be interested? Yep. Uh, so right now, actually, we are conducting a course um, that is already going on uh, that actually cover a details of what we actually um, showed today in the webinar. So one example is all the production process, not only the two that I showed here. And then in the utilization, in detailed fuel cell, uh, the, the vehicle system, and then there are lots of things. I mean, like, especially the thing that actually I couldn't cover here, that is the safety. So all the standard codes and safety while we are actually working in an industry. So that is a big part in the certificate course also. So yeah, I would like to um, invite all of you uh, to attend this certificate course. Uh, that will be definitely helpful for your industry it doesn't matter whether you are a, a manager or working in the hydrogen industry so or even a student so definitely that will be a very good course for all of you thank you back to riley thanks shaquille um i would just like to add uh, the next intake for this course is the 19th of september um, so next month, um, if anyone would like to join that course, um, yeah, please go to the uh, please go to the course on our website. Um, have a look. You can contact us and um, speak to one of our course advisors about the course if you'd like more information. Um, and I'll post the link to the course in the chat box as well if anyone would like to have a look. Um, so the next intake is the 19th of September. Moving on. Um, so, 
and we've got an, a webinar next week. Um, this this one was actually postponed. Um, this this webinar was supposed to be this afternoon as well. Um, however, yeah, one of the presenters unfortunately um, uh, caught COVID and uh, he's a bit sick at the moment. So um, uh, so it's been postponed one week. Um, and that's uh, yeah. So this is this is quite a different webinar. This one's being um, co-presented by Engineers Australia, uh, which is the Professional um, Engineering Association in Australia, and um, and Michael Page Engineering. So Michael Page uh, will be talking about um, uh, some of the uh, trends in Australian engineering jobs, and Engineers Australia will be talking about um, their membership. And um, so it's a quite quite a informative session. Um, if anyone yeah would like to join that, um, and it's I think it's particularly beneficial for anyone that's planning on studying or working in Australia. Um, yeah, so uh, if you'd like to uh, if you'd like to register for that, you can go to our website and go to our events page and have a look. Okay, and just briefly, so this gives you a brief overview of our upcoming courses. So, um, so our short courses run throughout the year. Um, they will have different intakes, uh, and that's the same as our advanced diploma courses. However, if you're looking at um, one of our higher education courses, you can see there, um, like our undergraduate certificates and bachelors. Um, and Doctor of Engineering starts on 13th of February next year. Our postgraduate programs like our graduate certificates and our masters start on the 2nd of January next year. Um, and we also offer on-campus courses uh, in Australia and those are starting on the 20th of February. Okay, and uh, as, as mentioned earlier, um, you can request a free certificate of attendance for this session if you would like to. Um, now, you need to fill out a form if you would like to receive one. Um, I'll post the link in the chat box. Um, you can do it now or in five or ten minutes time. It doesn't matter. Um, but uh, it's just a short you know, form that will take you about a minute or two to fill out. Um, and once you submit that form, um, you will receive a certificate of attendance uh, within the next uh, business day. Uh, Riley, so, can I add one thing, please? Absolutely. Okay. Um, actually, I just noticed there is uh, lots of comments and question also, a couple of questions, not too many, uh, but that yes, too um, many that I couldn't follow that. So uh, my sincere apology to all of you. Uh, but and thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, we really appreciate that. Okay, back to Riley. Thanks, Shaquille. Um, yeah, so that, that basically concludes our presentation. I'm just going to skip over the Q&A slide because um, I'd like to just say to anyone that needs to go, thank you very much uh, for attending the webinar today. Um, and I'll leave our contact details up on the on the slide there. Um, but um, yeah, Dr. Shaquille and I will will take some questions um, over the next you know few minutes. Uh, you know, if, if anyone has any questions, please post them in the chat box. I know there's been a lot over the session, um, but uh, yeah, if you still have any questions, please uh, please let me know. Okay, I can see one um, question. It says that how much is the cost for this course of the hydrogen? Do you have any information yeah. on that? So for the uh, for our short course um, on hydrogen, uh, you need to look at the course page itself. We have um, we have uh, country or region specific pricing, and uh, we deal with uh, multiple different currencies. Um, so please, please have a look at the um, at the course page, or uh, alternatively, we have a fees page um, on our website. Um, if you go to our fees page and enter your country of residence, um, it will show you all of our fees for all of our course types um, uh, for you there. Or alternatively, just go 
just go to the course I guess, page and have a look. I just got another question. Is this an online course? This is absolutely online. Am I right, Riley? Yes. Yeah, it's a fully online course. The um, the short course uh, in hydrogen. Um, I would like to say that all of our courses are delivered online. Um, however, uh, we have um, our bachelor's, master's and uh, doctor of engineering also delivered on campus in Australia. Um, but all of our courses are delivered online. Okay, and I've seen a question about scholarships. Um, yeah, we do we do provide scholarships for uh, for most of our courses, um, you can have a look at that under our how to apply drop down uh, and look at our scholarships page and there's um, a wide range of scholarships there, um, but you'll need to look at the eligibility. Um, some people were saying the webinar for next week is closed. Um, we'll look into that. Uh, it was it was meant to be this afternoon, but it was postponed. Um, so there might be an issue there with the registrations. So um, thank you for letting me know, and I'll and I'll look into that. Thank you. Um, are there any? There's some technical questions coming through, Shaquille. Did you did you want to answer any of any of those? Yep. That I'm very through? happy. I'm very happy. But the thing is, there was some technical question. But um, how do you hydrogen be? transport in international supply agreement between continent, say from South Africa to the UK or Australian. Um, well, this is beyond of my knowledge. I mean, like, I don't know about the supply agreement. Uh, I can answer if it is, if you ask me how you can do that. I mean, like whether it is pipeline, that is, uh, again, it's a really big thing because right now uh, we are trying to um, supply the Natural, uh, using the natural gas pipeline because that is really, I mean, like uh, big infrastructure. However, as I mentioned that because of the embrittlement nature of the hydrogen, hydrogen diffuse and the reduce the strength of the steel pipe and that actually um, then not suitable if it is more than even seven to eight bar of hydrogen. So which is very low. So we can supply that a very low pressurized hydrogen, but not the high one. So that is one of the big issue. I mean, like there are lots of research is going on. Thanks, Shaquille. Um, there's a question here from Eureka about uh, whether it's possible to use hydrogen for cars and how do we store hydrogen at a large quantity slash amount? I'm, I th I'm aware that there's a few car manufacturers that are developing um, cars to, to as uh, using hydrogen as a fuel is that correct Shakir? 100 percent correct i mean like we already have um i think if i go to the statistics by 2017 there was around 7,000, but definitely now more right uh, the hydrogen fuel vehicle on the road and uh, definitely they are actually using uh, the type 4 of tank for the compressed hydrogen that we already discussed, which is made of carbon fiber and then a liner of the polymer. Uh, so that actually can sustain up to 700 bar hydrogen. Thanks, Shaquille. Um, just going through the messages here. Um, Thanks for okay, then, all the comments, everyone. Have you, I've got another question. Have you done any structural analysis of pipeline for transporting liquid hydrogen? Mm, that's a very good question. No, I haven't done any. Uh, I haven't seen any paper on liquid hydrogen. So far, I have seen all for uh, compressed gas in the gaseous form. Yeah, that was actually Mac, the question came from. I'll just post the okay, link for the certificate of attendance uh, in the chat if anyone missed it earlier. Okay, another question from Oscar, which international standard regulates the storage and transport of hydrogen? Now, really, this is, I mean, like a very big um, topics in our course. I mean, like, I will really appreciate if you just please join in our course. I mean, like, we have got details information for that. Okay. Um, there was a Riley. question. 
There was a question yes. earlier. Someone asked about the requirements to join the course. Um, so for our short courses, if you're referring to the short course on hydrogen that we briefly talked about before, um, there is no there is no uh, sort of um, formal entry requirements. Um, so for our short courses, uh, yeah, there's re there's really no entry requirements. It's not um, as formal of an application process uh, as for um, you know, compared to our other courses. Like if you were applying for a advanced diploma or a um, higher education degree with us, um, uh, the process to enroll in one of our uh, professional certificates, our short courses. It's quite easy and uh, and there are no formal requirements to join the course. Um, there was a question from Andrea a little bit earlier, um, Shaquille. Um, mm -hmm. They asked, what is uh, your opinion on biological uh, production methods such as dark fermentation and photo fermentation? Mm -hmm. Could you repeat that again? That what is dark? fermentation I'll say, and photosynthetic process? Yeah, the question was uh, on biological production methods uh, such as dark fermentation and photo fermentation. Mm -hmm. So no, what do the Andrea or, uh, would like to know about that? Uh, what is the process they, they, and how just, do you put They just asked uh, what your opinion is on, on those methods oh okay okay so in in that case no i haven't explored my uh, research in that area yet so mm, that's right no I, I should rather not to answer this question that's okay um someone sam you've asked for my email address um you can reach me uh at the email address on the screen, but I'll put it on the, in the chat box as well. So it's webinars at eit.edu.au. Um, if anyone would like to reach myself, um, please send me an email. And uh, if anyone has any um, uh, burning questions, especially for Shaquille, I'm sure he would be happy to, uh, to answer um, any questions that might come through, but please, please uh, feel free to email me. Um, I'll just post the certificate of attendance again. Sorry, I know there's a lot of questions here. I'm just going through them all. There's a question uh, on can we use hydrogen on voltage applications of more than a thousand volts? What is the uh, cycle life of the cells? That's a good question, actually. I don't think we have got that technology yet to use more than uh, 1000 volt. No worries. Okay. Pressing the link for the certificate of attendance again. Um, Uh, Simon's asked, is green hydrogen regarded as uh, as renewable? Um, yes, definitely. Uh, that is a good question, actually. The green hydrogen is definitely renewable energy. I mean, like if we're getting the electricity uh, from a renewable source, say solar uh, or wind. Now, the question is, where is your boundary, system boundary, right? Now, if you are talking about, okay, well, to produce the solar cell, we are again producing um, greenhouse gas emissions. So then how come it is uh, renewable? Uh, the answer of this question is this totally depends where, what is the boundary of your life cycle analysis? If your life cycle analysis boundary is starting from the solar cell and finishing up to the production of electricity, then definitely renewable. But if you're talking about no, we will go up to the raw material and that actually we will, uh, uh, include the production of the solar panel that we're using to produce electricity, then definitely we are producing some greenhouse gas emission. So 
So far, I mean, like when we're talking about the green hydrogen, then that means our system boundary is starting from renewable source for production of electricity. And then you are using that electricity for the production of hydrogen again. Thanks, Shakil. Um, Emmanuel, uh, it would be best it would be best to go to our website and have a look at the course page or our fees page to uh, uh, to give you an accurate um, uh, fees for our courses. Um, as I said before, we deal with a, a lot of different countries and currencies, um, so it would be best to uh, to have a look and um, yeah, and please uh, please contact one of our course advisors if you have any questions. Um, I got another question. There are actually plenty of questions, Rally. The one actually I'm picking here again uh, from Richard. Will this make the reassurance of gas turbine to be fueled by hydrogen? The research is going on. We are actually using the blended fuel. Um, so natural gas blended with hydrogen. And we are trying to develop our burner so that we can use that in the gas turbine. As well as, I mean, like the so production of uh, steam so that we can use that in the steam power plant also. So there is another research where we are looking at the burning of blended hydrogen. Thanks, Shaquille. Um, there's, uh, there's a question about safety features in pipelines and storage tanks of Okay, uh, that's a good hydrogen. question. Uh, yep, there is, a, there is lots of safety feature and I actually, could not address that because of the time limitation, but that is really a very big topic in our course. So my apologies for the uh, my apology for that. But if you'd like to join in our course, definitely you will get a lot. I can assure you. Um. How, uh, there's a question, how efficient is green hydrogen in terms of energy production if 30% of the energy uh, can be used up for condensing it and some energy will be lost in the process too? Okay, okay, that's a good question again. Um, right now it is actually energy neutral. So that means uh, for the production of hydrogen, the energy we are using and the energy we are getting from burning the fuel, almost same. So we call it energy neutral. That is one of the disadvantage of production of hydrogen through this process. Um, there's just one question that's just come through. What's the difference? Uh, between domestic and hydrogen used in aviation industry? I'm not sure okay. about this question. No, the, the, the difference is the purity, right? So the one actually that we're using in the aviation industry, uh, much pure than the, the one that we're using in the domestic. And that is actually we discussed in, in details in our course also. Mm, so the grade of hydrogen, right? So the purity of the hydrogen and depending on the purity where we should use what type of hydrogen. Thanks Shaquille. Um, Simon, recommend the best course to start at EIT that is in line with green hydrogen because there's a project in Namibia. Namibia. Um, yeah, so as, as we briefly discussed before, um, our short course in hydrogen is a great place to start. Um, that is our only course that at the moment that is specifically um, focused on hydrogen. So uh, uh, I believe. Sorry, I'd like Shikil. to, oh, no, that's all right. Thank you. Uh, I, I'd like to add one more information and that actually has a huge part on the green hydrogen. So uh, the production of green hydrogen, the application. So that is one of the big part in our course right now. Thanks, Shaquille. Um, but yeah, I, I believe we are looking at developing uh, courses in the future on hydrogen, uh, more courses, but um, I don't have any information on that at this 
at this stage, um, but it is a growing area and, uh, and um, our academics have been talking about it um, a lot recently. So yeah, so there could be, it could be a lot more courses on that in the future. Um, I believe that's all we have time for today. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. And um, I'd like to remind you that um, we will be sending the slides and the recording um, to you via email within uh, one business day. Um, so look out for that email, check your junk email folder if you need to. Uh, but thank you very much uh, for joining today. We really appreciate it. And if you have any questions or would like to reach out to us, please, uh, refer to the contact details on the screen. Um, and thank you again, Shaquille, for, for a great presentation. Thank you, you too, Riley. Thanks, Shaquille. Bye.